now I have everything I need. All of my folders are, are where they should be. Um, and what I can also now go and do is go and open this index folder file, index file in my browser. Um, and so how do I do that? Well, um, there are many ways. Uh, the uh, most obvious just go to the file explorer and open the index file with your um, brow with your browser um, but let me just explain it a little bit so you can see I went there and I copied my path um, and so whenever you create a document even if it's on the internet it has a directory it has a path that it lives in on somebody else's server or computer and so here we can see that mine is inside users inside f west inside 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 until it's here okay so i could go and literally look for that file uh, so here it is here is my index file um, and obviously i'm working with what's this thing called chrome right now so if i open it with chrome you can see there's nothing there but this is here's my file path okay so this is where it's looking um, I can find that on my computer. Okay, so I could do that. I could also perhaps go and right click here and say reveal in Explorer um, and then also just literally go and open it. So there's my index file, but nothing's happening right now. So that's pretty boring. Uh, let me just close. Can I close this thing? That's good. I have some more space. So I don't really need to see where my files are. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to set up our boilerplate. Um, and then it's kind of like our template. So every time we start a project or every time we want to go, it's all set up for us. We don't have to do this over and over and over again. So um, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to hit shift and one, which is my exclamation mark. You guys will see here, this is that Emmet abbreviation that I was telling you about. So Emmet is saying, would you like to ac activate this? So I hit my tab button. So on your computer, look for tab and voila, here is my boilerplate. So it's my HTML document. I didn't have to come and sit and type this all out. I literally just hit exclamation and it came to life. How did I know that? Well, I also went to my cheat sheet and that's where I figured that out. Um, so you guys will see that it's given me my head, okay? So remember, your head is the stuff where all of the brains live, okay? Um, and it's also created a body for me, okay? So, um, and the whole thing is wrapped in an HTML tag, okay? So you can see that um, when we spoke about it being a tree earlier, you can see that I can actually drop down and go inside and have a look at these different elements so there we go um this is you know and and you guys will notice that it's included this viewport for us which we learned about which is awesome so here's our viewport um what we are immediately going to do is come and change our title so it can say project starter and maybe change me because every time you start a new project, you will want to change that. And again, if I hit Control S and I come to my actual index, now we can see at the top there, very small, it says project starter, change me. Okay, fantastic. So um, we've created our CSS and our JavaScript. Now let's get them to link. Um, so if we go again, where do we link things? Well, if we're linking CSS, specifically, we're linking it in our head. So uh, again, I'm just going to start typing the word, oh, the word link. Okay. And we can see that if I actually come and choose CSS, it already has linked for me. And it's already kind of given me, is this the right thing? Yeah, because it's not right. So let me put in my own CSS here. Um, and that would be CSS. Oh, not CSS. SSS. <laughs> and as you can see, because I'm using a backslash, which is indicating a file within a file, so a directory, this is my CSS folder. Okay, um, so control S, let's check if I actually did get that right. So um, if I just quickly came and chose the body, this is just a test. I like to do this just to keep my own sanity. Background color, let's choose dark blue. Control S and let's just refresh here. Okay, so I can see that it is linking correctly. I'm happy with life. I'll come back to my CSS later. Um, but for now, 
I'm gonna, I know that it's linked and it's working nicely. Okay, so again, this is in the head. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my JavaScript. Um, and you may not know, but JavaScript lives at the bottom of your body. You cannot run your JavaScript first, your code will crash because it's looking for something that, it, that isn't there yet. Um, so we put our script tag right at the bottom. Um, and again, I'm gonna choose script source. So just click on that guy. Um, and it's at the bottom. Can you see here's my body? It's at it's just before my body closes. All of my script information will live there. Sometimes it lives in the head. It's safer to just put it at the bottom. Okay. Um, and what is our file called? It's called JS and it's called a script. Okay, so those two are now linked. Fantastic. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna do just for um, just because it's something that you should go and check out. Um, I'm going to include something called Font Awesome. Uh, so if you go and Google Font Awesome, you can go and read up about it. You can use icons, you can use, and it's literally, it's all just there for you. Um, so this is kind of asking me to sign in. <sighs> it's kind of boring, so I don't really want to sign in. So what I will do is I will go to my best friend here, uh, CDN js.com so guys uh, you can see bootstrap uh, th there's a whole bunch of links um, and libraries available to you here so jquery libraries as well as you know when you use jquery you need to install the library first so these are a whole bunch of links for us um, and I could just click on font awesome or I could click here and type in font awesome and it will appear for me okay here we go, that looks right. <laughs> okay, so now anything I use from Font Awesome will automatically work for me. Okay, so that's pretty much my link. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna comment this out um, because I don't want, I, I'm, I'm not using it. So I'm only gonna have the link available when I actually use it. So again, it's there for later. Uh, let's see if I can make a comment. So again, I hit Control and C and K together, control C, K together. It takes, a, it takes some practice, um, but that's how you can make comments. And guys, you need to comment in everything. It makes my life easier when I mark your project and it makes your life easier when you try and figure out what the pick you did later. Okay, so we have, I think we've set up what we need to set up. You also notice that every time you haven't saved, there's a big dot here. Uh, so when I hit control S, the dot goes away, which makes me feel a bit better. Um, I'm going to just create um, an H1 um, and hit tab. And I'm going to just call this project start. Okay, um, cool. So there we go. Uh, let's have a look at it. What does it look like? It's not blue anymore. There we go. Fantastic. So there we go. My HTML document is happily set up. I'm very proud of myself. Um, I can now add in things. Where do I add stuff? In my body. Okay, in my body. This is where I come and start adding those containers and those boxes um, and boxes within boxes and images and links and buttons and all those beautiful things. So it lives where? In my body. Okay, and you can see that everything is nicely indented. Um, it's looking and sitting very pretty. Okay, which is awesome. See, I can click that down. Anyway, okay, so let's move on quickly. Farrell, stop wasting time, yo. So I'm gonna go to my style sheet and the first thing I'm gonna do is install a Google font uh, because fonts, I mean, that's SIF. What is this? I think it's Times New Roman probably. So I'm going to go to Google fonts, okay? Uh, and I'm going to search for a font and search for a link so let's choose Roberto, but as you can see, you can choose anyone you want. I click on that one. Um, let's say I want Roberto. Um, let's choose this one, medium. Hey, okay, Roberto medium looks good. So I click there. Um, I don't want to link it in the head of my HTML. I literally just want to import it into my CSS. So this is where I would do that. So import. Okay, you can see I'm embedding my font code the code into the head of your HTML, but this is in the CSS, I'm smart. So I'm gonna click on that. You'll also see that over here is if I'm gonna call that rule. Okay, so it's a capital R and it's sans serif. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and here now I've imported my actual font. 
awesome. So I'll I'll style it in a second. Um, the next thing I want to do is oh, use our famous um, box sizing. So luckily this week you learned about box sizing. Now you're about to learn about how to change every single element within your um, CSS. So this little asterisk, it's hash, it's an eight. Okay. Um, and basically what it is, it's your global rules. So it's when you open a Word document, you have uh, a default setting. It's always on 12 pixels. It's always on Roman, Times New Roman. Uh, the margins are always set for you. Everything's already set for you. So when you're creating a website, everything is also already set for you. Did you know that? So, um, for example, your standard default size is 12 or 16. I'm going to lie if I tell you what it actually is. Um, but what you can do is override those those actual settings. So that's what we're doing. We're making sure that we don't have this weird um, kind of a content box. So we're using box sizing, border box. You know what box sizing is. Go check it out on W3 Schools. But it's literally... I'm making sure that my content doesn't actually jump out of its width or that it just behaves and if I make a box that I know where the box stands so we don't have to play with the mag the margins the margins and the padding okay so that's the first thing I kind of come and mess with um, and you can see that nothing's actually changed yet everything is still just so chilled okay let me make this a bit smaller so we can see what we're doing. Uh, what I'm going to do now is let's actually style our body. Okay. And again, our body is at this stage our main container. So it's it's kind of like the, the outside box. Um, and my first thing is a fononoto. What the heck is that? Font family. Um, and again, I'm going to put in my own. And that would be Roboto. Let's get that spelling right. Um, and then it's... It is just default to sans serif. Okay, and if I save it, let's see, does it look pretty now? Yes, it looks pretty. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a display. So, guys, when you are creating your website, you can choose to either use Flexbox, to either use Grid or Grid View, to either use um, a table. Blech. That's terrible. Um, to kind of create your grid, okay. Um, you could also use float align and column and row and oh, it's so messy. I understand how Flexbox works. You should too, so you can Google it, literally, and use um, go and check out what Flexbox does. But this we we have we're also going to be doing grid, so that you understand both of them. But Flex is the one that works the best for me, so then I always use Flex. You could use Grid if you wanted to. Okay, basically what it is, it's a set of rules. So um, if I use Flex, then I have to const consistently use Flex box rules. And if I use Grid, so let's check if there's Grid here. If I use Grid, I have to consistently use all of the Grid rules. Okay, so you need to choose one or the other. Okay, I choose Flexbox because it's just fun. Okay, so let's actually have a look at what this is going to do for us. Um, if I come back to my HTML and I just create another, ooh, that's definitely not going to work, another H1. And let's say cheese because that's great. And let's just put another cheese next to that because, you know, we always got to do the cheese. Um, you guys will then see that because I've got a flex box, um, everything sits next to itself. Everything sits, because I haven't told it what columns or what rows or what to do yet. I've just told it that, hey, this is, I'd like to define this box. This box must listen to all of my flex box rules. Um, okay, so again, what's really cool about, uh, what is this thing called? Uh, Visual Studio Code is it actually gives you a lot of information. So if you don't know what you're doing, you can always just click and go to MDN, which is great, and learn more. So um, let's have a look if we, again, flex direction is something that I know will change the direction. You can see I've got rows and columns. Um, and so if I choose flex direction column, let's see what then happens. Ha, ah, they sit underneath each other. And obviously I can go 
and edit the gutter. I can go maybe and add in um, fractions of how I want these guys to kind of behave. Um, so, but for now it's cool. I'm happy with just uh, one column. Um, and you can see that it's a little bit sad. I'd like to actually align these items. So uh, align the items to center. Uh, let's see what that does. Okay, very good. Um, and then obviously this is just my actual box. It's, it's just aligning to the center of my box. So again, my viewport, however I squish or squash, um, it's just looking at the center of my box, not really the center. So I'd like to put these also in the center. Um, and to do that, I'm going to say justify content and justify content also to the center. Okay, this is just so that everything chills in the center. Maybe I don't want that. Um, later, I can always come and mess this around. Then a most important one. So let's say I want it to sit in the middle. Um, I'm going to be using height. So remember, we have the width and the height properties. And we have all these different... Um, what are they called? <laughs> units of measurement. And so you guys can see that I'm using the VH, which stands for viewport or viewport height. Okay. And this should shove everything in the middle. And it doesn't matter where I go, how small, you see that it'll stay in the middle of however I stretch my height. Okay. So that's why using um, view height and view um, width is responsive and and why is this working because we put in this line of code here which tells our actual code to please be aware of what's happening with the viewport um then another thing that we have kind of played with and we messed around with the vega website uh, the learn website with is overflow um uh, the default for overflow as you would know is scrolly bars and i don't want that um, so my content mustn't scroll outside of a bar, it must stay where it is. Okay, so I set my overflow to hidden, um, and I'm just going to give it a margin of zero. Okay, so let's see what that has done to my nothing. Okay, so as you guys can see, it's all set up for me now. I can come back later, um, and I can mess around with this. Um, and my JavaScript at the moment, it's I'm not doing anything with my JavaScript because uh, we will leave that for later. Um, but for now, I've got my font set up. I've got my box sizing. I'm happy with where my boxes are sitting. Well, I'm going to just delete this because this was just for preview. Um, but guys, there is your boiler plate. That is what every time you would come then um, to your actual files. So it's called projects. Um, Maybe we shouldn't have called it project. Maybe we should have called it a new folder. Let's call it project starter. Okay. And let's just put, I'm going to break it, isn't it? Am I not? Yes, I am. What I can do is I can then come and before I start a project, copy and paste, okay, and call this, uh, let's say we're going to be creating a nav bar, so I'd call this nav, nav project. So then when I come inside here, there is everything I need. And I can duplicate this as many times as I want. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe it would be good to actually be inside another folder, just in case. Because now it feels like we're outside. So rather have a projects folder and inside. So let's let's try this. Here's my nav project. Let's create a new folder. I see already choking myself up. Um, and call it code projects. Um, and then what I can do is I can take 
here's my nav project so if I go into code projects I can just copy this and then say paste yes that would be good and we can just call this project starter this will starter okay. and then every time I can just come and copy it and paste it and maybe we're making a dating app because we all need love okay so here then I have all of my folders neatly inside coding projects okay so um this is just it won't it won't close because this is open um but then what i could go and do is let's say i need to work on that folder um i can literally say okay so what i can do is i can come into studio visual studio code go to file open folder i called it code projects right select folder and here we have all of my files that I need to use. Um, oh, that would be a bit confusing, but literally here we go. I can open these one at a time. Or I can literally just come and open with, can you open with? Anyway, whatever, you guys get it? So that's how you set up your um, boilerplate. Uh, yeah, this is, I've tried to go really fast. Um, so what I suggest you do is uh, pause um, and then catch up where you can and continue. Um, but this will then be the way that we can carry on working in class with projects or things like that. Um, and it'll just be really helpful um, for when you have to hand in your project. Make sure that your files are beautifully named and organized and hopefully it all makes sense. Okay, bye.